Season two of the Ali G Show featured a panel discussion on democracy. History's greatest talk show host threw tradition out the window and suggested that once a person has reached puberty, he or she should be allowed to vote. Wouldn't it be more better instead of having a vote in age, just saying, all right, if you've got pubes, you can vote? Uh, it, I, you know, I, I, I would be willing to try it in some uh, smaller way first as an experiment. However, since Ali G was taking his slogans from the street, he almost sounded like he was suggesting something far, far more sinister. Does you not agree if there is fluff on the muff, then she is old enough? But why 18, as we say on the street, if there's grass on the pitch, let's play. For you Americans, a pitch is a playing field for whatever sports they play in Great Britain. So the American equivalent would be, if there's grass on the field, play ball. Apparently, an entire generation of Muslim apologists has drawn its dawah strategy from Ali G. Take Ali Dawa, a young man who insists that if his daughter were to reach puberty at the age of nine, he would tell her that she's ready for marriage. If my daughter reached the age of menstruation at nine years old, I would say you are ready. What's it like? You are ready to get married. However, it's forbidden for me to do more. She says, Dad, I don't want to get married. Okay. All right, no, 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 but say she does. Okay. Say she does. Okay. If there is fluff on the muff, then she is old enough. To be fair, Ali Dawa elsewhere qualifies his position by noting that a nine-year-old girl would also need to be mentally, physically, and sexually ready for marriage. So where do we go? What's the principle? Look, what's the principle? She has to be mentally, sexually, physically ready, and they should not, there's a harm factor. Now, why would a popular YouTube apologist like Ali Dawa be defending marriage to nine-year-old girls and even admitting that if his own daughter reached puberty at the age of nine, he would tell her that she's ready for marriage? Easy. Ali Dawa is trying desperately to defend his prophet from criticism, and yet he's still too ashamed of his prophet to acknowledge the disturbing truth. Let's take a closer look at the problem. According to the Quran, Muhammad is a good example for Muslims to follow. Allah declares in Surah 33, verse 21, Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, you have a good example to follow for him who hopes for the meeting with Allah and the last day and remembers Allah much. Imagine our surprise when we open Islam's most trusted historical sources and read passage after passage proclaiming that Muhammad, Allah's good example for Muslims, had sex with a nine-year-old girl. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5133 narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. Sahih al-Bukhari 5158, narrated Urwa, the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was six years old, and consummated his marriage with her while she was nine years old, and she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. Sahih Muslim, 3481, it was narrated from Aisha that the Prophet married her when she was seven years old, and she was taken to him as a bride when she was nine years old, and she took her dolls with her. He died when she was 18 years old. Sahih Muslim, 3482, it was narrated from Aisha that the Messenger of Allah married her when she was six years old, and consummated the marriage with her when she was nine years old, and he died when she was 18 years old. Sunan Abu Dawud, 2121. Aisha narrated, The Messenger of Allah married me while I was a girl of seven years, Suleiman, one of the narrators, said, or six, and he consummated the marriage when I was a girl of nine. How are Muslims going to reconcile the Quran's claim that Muhammad is a good example for them with the historical fact that Muhammad climbed on top of a nine-year-old girl when he was more than 50 years old? There are three basic approaches. First, it's become quite common in recent years for Muslim apologists to assert that Aisha was much older than nine when her prophet had sex with her. They say that Aisha was 16 or even 18 years old when the seal of the prophets broke the seal of her virginity. Unfortunately for proponents of the Aisha was much older defense, this response only works in an atmosphere of total ignorance. If someone who has never read Islam's most trusted sources hears that Aisha was older than nine, 
he might believe it. But in due time, people who have read Islam's most trusted sources will step in and point out that whereas Islam's most trusted sources repeatedly say that she was nine years old when Muhammad forced his penis inside her, we don't have any sources saying that she was 16 or 18. The claim that Aisha was older than nine is a lie invented by con men to deceive the gullible. Second, since the Aisha was much older defense is doomed to failure, other Muslim apologists acknowledge that Aisha was nine years old while insisting that she had reached puberty when Muhammad took her to bed. We'll call this the Ali G defense. A girl who has reached the age of puberty at the age of 12 is an adult. If there is fluff on the muff, then she is old enough. A girl reaches adulthood when she starts menstruating, right? If there's grass on the pitch, let's play. That's why Islam came for all, all time, because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, <laughs> married her at six and waited for her to be an adult and menstruate to consummate. Does you not agree if there is fluff on the muff, then she is old enough? Why did he wait three years? This is really important, because the fact he knew she was not sexually developed, he had to wait three years in order for her to become an adult, then to consummate. If there's grass on the pitch, let's play. The problem with the Ali G defense is that, much like the Aisha was much older defense, it's completely false and only works in an atmosphere of ignorance. Aisha hadn't reached puberty when Muhammad shattered her childhood, and Islam allows marriage to and sex with prepubescent girls. The claim that Aisha had reached puberty by the time she was taken to Muhammad's house so that he could tear her hymen is based entirely upon conjecture. You'll recall from the passages we read that Muhammad married Aisha when she was six or seven years old and that he consummated the marriage when she was nine years old. So, Muhammad waited two to three years to have sex with his child bride. Why did he wait? Well, if you're a Muslim apologist trying to put a positive twist on an already twisted story, you'll claim that Muhammad was waiting until Aisha reached puberty. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, if he was a pedophile, what they call, yeah, he would have married Aisha at six and consummated and said, look, I don't care. The fact that he, will, he waited three years is because of her well-being. Islam has come to protect the well-being of a girl. What, the, what Islam came down is not for one time, but for all time. That's why Islam is saying you cannot give it an age. The assumption here is that the only reason to postpone a sexual relationship with a child bride is that you're waiting for her to reach puberty. That's a false assumption. I would imagine that a 50 plus year old man might have trouble penetrating a six year old girl. So he could have simply been waiting for her to grow a bit. Also, Muhammad married Aisha around the time of the Hijra, the migration of the Muslim community from Mecca to Medina. Before the Hijra, the Muslim community was a persecuted minority in Mecca. After the Hijra, Muhammad was extremely busy establishing the Muslim community in Medina. Maybe he was just too busy to focus on his marriage to Aisha. Those are possibilities, but a more obvious reason comes directly from the Muslim sources. Shortly after Muhammad married Aisha, she got so sick that her hair fell out. Sahih al-Bukhari, 3894. Narrated Aisha, my marriage, wedding contract, with the Prophet was written when I was a girl of six years. We came to Al-Medina and we dismounted at the place of Bani al-Harith bin Khazraj. Then I got ill and my hair fell down. Later on, my hair grew again and my mother, Umm Ruman, came to me while I was playing in a swing with some of my girlfriends. She called me and I went to her, not knowing what she wanted to do to me. She caught me by the hand and made me stand at the door of the house. I was breathless then, and when my breathing became normal, she took some water and rubbed my face and head with it. Then she took me into the house. There in the house I saw some Ansari women who said, best wishes and Allah's blessing and good luck. Then she entrusted me to them and they prepared me for the marriage. Unexpectedly, Allah's messenger came to me in the forenoon and my mother handed me over to him. And at that time, I was a girl of nine years of age. So what was Muhammad waiting for? He was waiting for Aisha's hair to grow back. According to another passage, Muhammad only waited until Aisha's hair came down to her ears. Sunan Abu Daud, 4935. It was narrated with another chain that Aisha said, when we came to Al Medina, some woman came to me while I was playing on a swing and my hair only came down to my ears. 
They took me and prepared me and adorned me. Then they took me to the Messenger of Allah and he consummated the marriage with me when I was nine years old. Why was Muhammad waiting to consummate his marriage to Aisha? She was bald and Muhammad liked long hair. As soon as her hair started growing back, she was taken to Muhammad's house so that he could be a good example for Muslims everywhere. So, the only basis Muslims have for claiming that Aisha had reached puberty falls apart as soon as we start going through the Islamic sources. Muhammad wasn't waiting for Aisha to reach the age of puberty. He was waiting for her hair to grow back after some sort of sickness. In case there's any doubt about this, we know from Muslim sources that Aisha had not reached puberty by the time she was taken to Muhammad's house for consummation. You'll recall from our reading of Sahih Muslim 3481 that when Aisha was taken to Muhammad's house, she took her dolls with her. Why is this important? Well, aren't dolls images? Aren't images forbidden in Islam? Why was Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, the mother of the faithful, playing with forbidden images? As it turns out, prepubescent girls were allowed to play with dolls because prepubescent girls hadn't reached the age of moral accountability. But don't take my word for it. Sahih al-Bukhari, 6130. Narrated Aisha, I used to play with dolls in the presence of the Prophet, and my girlfriends also used to play with me. When Allah's Messenger used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves, but the Prophet would call them to join and play with me. Playing with dolls and similar images is forbidden, but it was allowed for Aisha at that time, as she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. Playing with dolls is forbidden in Islam, but it was allowed for Aisha because she was a little girl who hadn't reached the age of puberty. In Islamic sources, if you wanted to say that a girl hadn't reached puberty, you'd simply say that she still had her dolls. That's why Aisha pointed out that she still had her dolls when her prophet decided to consummate his marriage to her. Beyond this, Islam's most trusted sources even link Muhammad's marriage to Aisha with the Quran's claim that Muslim men can marry, have sex with, and divorce a girl all before she's reached the age of puberty. Earlier, in Surah 2, verse 228 of the Quran, Allah had revealed that if a Muslim man wants to divorce his wife, he should wait until she's gone through three monthly cycles, i.e. three monthly periods, in order to make sure that she isn't pregnant. But the question later arose. What about wives who don't have monthly cycles? How long should their husbands wait to divorce them? The Quran answers this question in Surah 65, verse 4, where it gives divorce rules for three categories of wives who don't have a monthly cycle. Women who don't have a monthly cycle because they're too old, girls who don't have a monthly cycle because they're too young, and women and girls who don't have a monthly cycle because they're pregnant. The verse declares that if Muslim men want to divorce girls who haven't yet reached puberty, they have to wait three months. The verse reads, And those of your women as have passed the age of monthly courses, for them the idda, prescribed period, if you have doubt about their periods, is three months. And for those who have no courses, i.e. they are still immature, their idda, prescribed period, is three months likewise, except in case of death. And for those who are pregnant, whether they are divorced or their husbands are dead, their idda, prescribed period, is until they lay down their burden. And whoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, he will make his matter easy for him. In case there's any confusion about the meaning of this verse, here are three classic Muslim commentaries on Surah 65, verse 4 of the Quran. Tafsir ibn Kathir. Allah the Exalted clarifies the waiting period of the woman in menopause, and that is the one whose menstruation has stopped due to her older age. Her idda is three months instead of the three monthly cycles for those who menstruate, which is based upon the ayah in Surat al-Baqarah, C2228. The same for the young who have not reached the years of menstruation. Their idda is three months like those in menopause the young who have not reached the years of menstruation, i.e. prepubescent girls. Tafsir Jalalain. And as for those of your women who, yada yada, no longer expect to menstruate, 
If you have any doubts about their waiting period, their prescribed waiting period shall be three months. And also for those who have not yet menstruated because of their young age, their period shall also be three months. Again, here we have rules for divorcing girls who had not yet menstruated because of their young age, i.e. prepubescent girls. Tafsir Ibn Abbas. And for such of your women as despair of menstruation because of old age, if you doubt about their waiting period, their period of waiting shall be three months. Upon which another man asked, O Messenger of Allah, what about the waiting period of those who do not have menstruation because they are too young, along with those who have it not? Because of young age, their waiting period is three months. Notice, Ibn Abbas, Muhammad's cousin, gives the historical background. Muhammad was revealing the part about women in menopause when someone raised his hand and asked Muhammad about divorcing girls who do not have menstruation because they are too young, i.e. prepubescent girls. According to Allah, then, are Muslim men allowed to marry, have sex with, and divorce prepubescent girls? Absolutely. And, as I mentioned, Muslim sources link Allah's ruling in the Quran to Muhammad's marriage to Aisha. We read Sahih al-Bukhari 5133, but notice the chapter heading. Giving one's young children, not adults, giving one's young children in marriage is permissible. Why? By virtue of the statement of Allah, and for those who have no monthly courses, i.e. they are still immature, Surah 65 verse 4 of the Quran, and the idda, the waiting period for a divorce, for the girl before puberty, before puberty, before puberty, is three months in the above verse. And to illustrate Allah's ruling in the Quran, Bukhari quotes Aisha saying that Muhammad had sex with her when she was only nine years old. Why would Bukhari connect this hadith to a verse of the Quran that gives permission to Muslims to have sex with prepubescent girls? It only makes sense to connect these two passages if Aisha hadn't reached puberty. So, what are we to make of all the Muslim apologists who are using the Ali G defense of Muhammad's marriage to Aisha? A girl reaches adulthood when she starts menstruating, right? If there's grass on the pitch, let's play. That's why Islam came for all, all time, because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, <laughs> married her at six and waited for her to be an adult and menstruate to consummate. Does you not agree if there is fluff on the muff, then she is old enough? Why did he wait three years? This is really important, because the fact he knew she was not sexually developed, he had to wait three years in order for her to become an adult, then to consummate. If there's grass on the pitch, let's play. We can only conclude that they're ashamed of their prophet and that they're searching for some sort of positive message where there is none. If Allah, through his word and through his prophet, was trying to show future generations of Muslims that they could only have sex with a girl after she's reached puberty, Allah must be the worst communicator in all of history because the Quran says the exact opposite and Muhammad did the exact opposite. So the Ali G defense not only contradicts the facts, but also insults Allah and Muhammad. That leaves us with the third Muslim defense, which is to admit that Aisha was only nine years old when Muhammad mounted her, and to admit that she hadn't reached puberty, but to maintain that there's nothing wrong with a grown man having sex with a prepubescent nine-year-old girl. Thank heaven for little girls. Thank heaven for them all, no matter where, no matter who. We'll call this the honest approach because it's the true position of Islam and the only defense that's consistent with Allah's commands in the Quran and Muhammad's example in the Hadith. Why don't more Muslim apologists simply admit that their God allows men to have sex with prepubescent girls and that their prophet had sex with a prepubescent girl? As always, if you tell people what Islam really teaches and if you tell people the truth about Muhammad, no one's going to convert to Islam. If you want people to convert to Islam, you have to lie about Islam. The D in Dawah stands for deception. The A stands for, all right, we need even more deception. The W stands for, what happens if people start reading our sources and realize that we're lying? The second A stands for, accuse all critics of lying, even though we're the ones who are lying, and even though our critics are the ones who are proving their points by quoting directly from our sources. 
And the H stands for, holy cow, what kind of religion relies on an endless supply of lies to prop it up? That's Dawa. But whatever else happens, never forget that what Sasha Baron Cohen said as a joke to show how stupid and perverted his character Ali G was, if there's fluff on the muff, then she is old enough, is now being used as the cornerstone of Islamic Dawa. A girl who has reached the age of puberty at the age of 12 is an adult. And never forget that as horrifyingly depraved as this position is, it's still far, far better than what we actually find in the commands of Allah and the example of Muhammad. Even Islamic Dawagandists find their prophet too revolting to tell people the truth about his life and teachings. So, is Muhammad really a good example for Muslims to follow? Let me know what you think in the comments section. If my daughter reached the age of menstruation at nine years old, I would say you are ready. What's it called? You are ready to get married. So, so the point here is this, and even there's a video going around that apparently I was saying, oh, I will let a 40-year-old man marry my nine-year-old daughter. I never said not such a thing.